Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We have a sequence of ILD random variables. Random variable x1 is equal to 2 to the k, where k is a positive integer with probability 2 to the minus k. The first moment of any of these random variables is equal to summation over positive integer k of 2 to the k times 2 to the minus k, and this is plus infinity. These random variables have an infinite first moment. We want to investigate the convergence in probability of the sum from x1 to xn divided by n, the number of terms in the sum, times the natural logarithm of n. We need to show that we have convergence to this constant. The idea here is that rather than dealing directly with this quantity, I replace len n by a sequence alpha n. Specifically, alpha n is a positive integer valued sequence that tends to infinity as n tends to infinity. We obtain the other properties of the sequence alpha n such that we guarantee convergence in probability. Here we have the sum i from 1 to n of xi divided by n times alpha n. This random variable converges in probability to 1 if for every epsilon greater than 0, the limit of this probability as n tends to infinity is equal to 0. Multiplying both sides of this inequality by n alpha n, the event becomes the absolute value of summation i from 1 to n xi minus n alpha n greater than epsilon n alpha n. We apply the law of total probability and write down the probability of this event as the sum of two probabilities. In this first probability, we include the event that the maximum xi i from 1 to n is less than or equal to 2 to the power alpha n. In the second probability, we include the complement of this event. If we want to show convergence in probability of this random variable to 1, we need to show that both probabilities tend to 0 as n tends to infinity. What we will exactly do is that we upper bound each probability and show that the upper bound tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. Let's start with this probability here. The joint probability of two events is upper bounded by the probability of one of them. We choose here to upper bound this probability by the probability that the maximum of the random variables from x1 to xn exceeds 2 to the alpha n. This probability is 1 minus the probability that the maximum is less than or equal to 2 to the alpha n. The event that the maximum of the random variables from x1 to xn being less than or equal to some given threshold is equivalent to every random variable being less than or equal to this threshold. Because our random variables are independent, the joint probability of these events can be written as a product. And because our random variables are identically distributed, we can just write down this probability as the probability that random variable x1 is less than or equal to 2 to the alpha n. Then we raise this probability to the power n. x1 is equal to 2 to the k with probability 2 to the minus k. We have here summation over positive integer k. Here is the probability 2 to the minus k. The random variable is less than or equal to 2 to the alpha n. So we need 2 to the k to be less than or equal to 2 to the alpha n. This indicator is 1 if the condition inside is true, 0 otherwise. This indicator is equal to 1 if k is less than or equal to alpha n. We can remove the indicator and truncate our sum. Now we have a sum k from 1 to alpha n of 2 to the minus k. Recall that alpha n is chosen to be a positive integer valued sequence. It can take any arbitrary high value if n is sufficiently large. We have a geometric series. The first term is 2 to the minus 1. Then we have 1 minus 2 to the minus the number of terms, which is alpha n, over 1 minus 2 to the minus 1. 1 half goes away with 1 half. This probability is upper bounded by 1 minus 1 minus 2 to the minus alpha n, all to the power n. If we want the upper bound to tend to 0 as n tends to infinity, then we need this limit statement to be true. We need limit as n tends to infinity of the nth power of 1 minus 2 to the minus alpha n to be 1. We can multiply and divide by n. We need limit as n tends to infinity of 1 minus n times 2 to the minus alpha n divided by n, all raised to the power n, to be 1, which is e to the power 0. We make use of the following result. Consider a sequence of generally complex numbers, cn. This sequence converges to c as n tends to infinity. 1 plus cn divided by n, all raised to the power n, converges to e to the power c as n tends to infinity. We want the limit to be 1, which is e to the power 0. So we need the sequence n times 2 to the minus alpha n to converge to 0 as n tends to infinity. If this is true, the upper bound on this probability tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. To have convergence in probability, we need this probability or its upper bound to converge to 0 as n tends to infinity. We have two events. The second event here is that the maximum is less than or equal to 2 to the alpha n, and this is equivalent to every random variable being less than or equal to 2 to the alpha n. If these two events are true, 
we can rewrite them with an indicator inserted here. This indicator is one whenever xi is less than or equal to 2 to the alpha m. Note that if this statement is true, then this indicator is always equal to 1. This probability is upper bounded by the probability where we insert those indicators. We can upper bound this joint probability by the probability of this event here. Note that n alpha n is the expectation of this random variable. Let's verify this. What is the expectation of summation i from 1 to n xi? Indicator xi less than or equal to 2 to the power alpha n. Expectation is linear. The random variables are identically distributed. So this expectation is n times the expectation that x1 indicator x1 less than or equal to 2 to the alpha n. This expectation is summation over positive integer k. x1 is 2 to the k with probability 2 to the minus k. So here we put the probability and then this function with x1 replaced by 2 to the k. This product is unity. The indicator means that we have this expectation equal to n summation k from 1 to alpha n of 1. This is n alpha n. n alpha n is the first moment of this random variable. We can apply Chebyshev's inequality and upper bound this probability by the variance of this sum divided by epsilon squared n squared alpha n squared. Because the random variables are independent, the variance of the sum is the sum of variances. And because the random variables are identically distributed, the sum of variances is n times the variance of x1 indicator x1 less than or equal to 2 to the alpha n. When we apply Chebyshev's inequality, we get n squared. When we write the sum of variances as the variance of one term, we get an n in the numerator. This external factor becomes 1 over epsilon squared alpha n squared times m. The variance is upper bounded by the second moment. For the second moment, we write a sum k from 1 to infinity, the probability 2 to the minus k. Then we replace each x1 here by 2 to the k. We get 2 to the 2k, indicator 2 to the k less than or equal to 2 to the alpha n. The effect of this indicator is to have a finite sum k from 1 to alpha n. The product of these two terms is 2 to the power k. This is a geometric series. The first term is 2. We have 2 to the power of the number of terms in the sum, which is alpha n, minus 1. Downstairs, we have 2 minus 1, which is 1. We can upper bound this bracket by 2 to the alpha n. This is the upper bound. We have this 2 over epsilon squared, a positive real number. This part depends on n. To have convergence in probability, we need this part to approach 0 as n tends to infinity. We get this limit statement. Limit as n tends to infinity, 2 to the alpha n over n alpha n squared is 0. Let's collect what we have regarding the sequence alpha n. Alpha n is positive integer valued. Alpha n tends to infinity as n tends to infinity. 2 to the minus alpha n times n tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. We also have this limit statement, which is equivalent to the limit as n tends to infinity of n alpha n squared over 2 to the alpha n equal to infinity. If we have 2 to the minus alpha n multiplied by n, this approaches 0 as n tends to infinity. But if we multiply this by alpha n squared, the limit should be infinity. A possible sequence alpha n that satisfies these limit statements is alpha n equal to the ceiling of log n to the base 2 plus log to the base 2 of log n to the base 2. For n greater than or equal to 2, this is an integer valued sequence. If alpha n is given by this ceiling, then alpha n is greater than or equal to this quantity and is strictly less than the same quantity plus 1. Multiply all sides by minus 1. The inequalities are reversed, so we get the negative of this quantity here and the negative of that one there. 2 to the power both sides of this inequality gives that 2 to the minus alpha n is less than or equal to 2 to the minus log n to the base 2 minus log log n. Multiply both sides by n. 2 to the minus log n to the base 2, that's 1 over n. The right-hand side is 2 to the minus log log n. This is 1 over log n to the base 2, which tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. This limit statement is satisfied. Now we focus on this inequality. We do 2 to the power both sides, then multiply by n times alpha n squared. Note that alpha n squared is greater than or equal to the square of this quantity. 2 to the minus 1 is 1 half. 2 to the minus log n to the base 2, that's 1 over n, times n, that's 1. We also get this 1 over log n to the base 2. Then we have this square here. Note that when we square, we get log n to the base 2 squared in the numerator, thereby indicating that a lower bound on this quantity tends to infinity as n tends to infinity. If alpha n is like this, this limit statement is true. If alpha n is given by the ceiling, then for every positive epsilon, we have the limit as n tends to infinity 
of the probability that the absolute value exceeds epsilon, the absolute value of 1 over n alpha n summation k from 1 to n x k minus 1, the limit is equal to 0. This is exactly the definition of convergence in probability. Choosing alpha n in this way, we have established this statement that 1 over n alpha n summation k from 1 to n of x k converges in probability to 1. The interest of the problem is a slightly different quantity. It's the sum of the random variables from x1 to xn, but the outside factor is 1 over n len n. We need to use the established convergence statement to show that we also have convergence of this quantity to the constant 1 over len 2. The idea here is to rewrite this side as summation k from 1 to n xk divided by n alpha n times alpha n divided by len n. If a sequence a n converges in probability to random variable a, if sequence b n converges in probability to b, then the product a n b n converges in probability to the product a b. This bracket here converges in probability to the degenerate random variable 1. What about this sequence, alpha n over len n? It is a deterministic sequence. Alpha n is given by this ceiling. So alpha n over len n is lower bounded by this quantity, log n to the base 2 plus log to the base 2 of log n to the base 2. And we can write len n as len 2 log n to the base 2 because log n to the base 2 is len n over len 2. We also have an upper bound on this ratio. The difference is that the numerator has an extra plus 1. As n tends to infinity, both the lower bound and the upper bound tend to the coefficient of log n to the base 2 in the numerator divided by the coefficient of log n to the base 2 in the denominator. In other words, the lower and upper bounds tend to 1 over len 2 as n tends to infinity. This deterministic sequence converges to 1 over len 2 as n tends to infinity. If we think of the sequence as a sequence of random variables, then alpha n over len n converges almost surely to 1 over len 2. Almost sure convergence implies convergence in probability. So this part here converges in probability to 1 over len 2. The sequence of interest converges to 1 times 1 over len 2 as n tends to infinity. 